Today we're going to show you a few stretches or mobility exercises to help you with anyone that's been diagnosed with lumbar stenosis. So um, the first thing we're going to talk about is just the anatomy of the spine. This upper segment from C through through C7 is the cervical spine and this is a normal curve. Then we have the thoracic spine which is T1 to T12. And then the lumbar spine is the lower area here, and this is what we're talking about. This is where most of the stenosis that we have trouble with occurs from. And this is the lumbar area from L1 to L5. And the sacrum, this triangular bone is, I call it S1, but there are a few segments, a series of few segments that make up one bone at the very bottom of the spine. Okay? So what is spinal stenosis? Stenosis just means that a narrowing of a certain part of your body, and that could be in your heart, it could be a narrowing of vessels. In the spine here, um, we have um, the intervertebral foramen, and I'm just going to show you a little higher up, up here on the spine. Um, generally, it occurs, what we concern about the stenosis is typically lower. So in this area right here, we have a little nerve that's exiting the spine, and the foramen, okay, or intervertebral foramen, is this hole that the nerve comes out of. Okay, and what will happen is, especially as we get a little older, especially like plus 50, plus 55, we start having a narrowing of this area in a lot of folks. A lot of folks actually have this narrowing and have no pain at all. In this area right here, you have a narrowing, and as we age, that gets tighter and tighter. Folks that have spinal stenosis, a lot of times, they're the people with like buttock or leg pain, and they like to sit down. They actually don't like standing, walking. If you see someone walking with spinal stenosis that has problems, a lot of times they feel better when they lean forward. So you see people leaning forward, and they're actually trying to you know, adopt a posture. You say, hey, well, they don't have good posture. That actually takes pressure off this nerve root. So as we flex and we sit, we have more room in that opening right there. And then as we stand and we're more erect, that area where the nerve root exits is actually narrower. So sometimes it's swelling around the nerve root. Sometimes there's a disc herniation that's providing or bulge. Sometimes it's uh, some boning spurs that are actually creating a narrowing or thickening of the ligaments. So several things can cause stenosis. So that's just so you understand that. But realize this is something that even though a lot, there's a lot of people that have stenosis and they'll do MRIs and they'll show a large proportion of people that have stenosis, not all of them have symptoms. So it's not necessarily something that's structural that has to have have surgery. There are cases, but most of the cases they find that as you go further out from the surgical date, people managing this conservative, like stretching and exercise feels just as good as the people that actually um, have surgery on this area. So just keep that in mind and you have some hope about taking care of this problem. So let's show you a few stretches you can do at home to get you started. So if you're enjoying this video and you've looked at some of our channel, please subscribe to our channel, turn on notifications, and hit a like if you like this video at the end. Um, and hey, place a comment, and maybe I'll, I can't answer everyone, but I'll try and answer your comment um, at, the, at the end of this video. So what do these exercises do? Basically what we're trying to do is create flexion. So when the spine right here, this is a normal spine, when we arch, like lean back, that narrows the area. When we flex, and we lean forward like sitting or knees to chest, we're opening up the area around those nerve roots to try and decompress and take some pressure off it. So we're gonna do these exercises when we're in pain and it should reduce it or at least be even. Sometimes you need to do these exercises for a longer period of time before you see results. It should never make it feel worse. So keep that in mind, all right? So here are the three. So this is just a knees to chest exercise. You can put your hands over the top of the knee or even behind the knee. What you want to do is you want to get the, your lower back, your waistband coming off the table so you feel a little stretch in the lower back and then release it. You don't have to go all the way back down. You can hold it, you know, start out for like, you know, two sets of 15 and maybe include as you increase the time, then increase, decrease the number. So start out with one or two second holds. Then slowly increase the time, maybe five or 10 seconds. At the very top, take a little breath, breathe in. Breathe out and get those knees as high as you can and then release it. You should feel a stretch, but it should feel like a good stretch. That's your knees to chest. And you want to do this at least two or three times a day. If you tolerated the first uh, one, the, the knees to chest one, but you're still not getting results, but you tolerated it, it didn't make it worse, you can try the second one. It's a little bit more intensity. So you're going to get to the very edge of the chair, okay? You can use your body weight. You're going to put your arms across like this, and you're simply going to lean forward, little stretch and then come back up. Just like I said with the other one, start one or two seconds, and then as you increase the number, let's say five or 10 second hold, you really just kind of let yourself kind of rock or stay in this position, then you'll decrease your number to maybe 10 times. So you want to do this about two or three times a day, okay? And the last and final one is more, the most intense one that we'll show you in standing. 
Okay, so this is our last one. Same rules apply. We start with one or two second holds. We do it in standing. Um, I like to have our feet are a little bit wider like so. Okay, and you're going to bend forward. If you kind of bottom out on the floor, you touch the floor, and do the same thing we did in sitting, all right? Cross your arms and let your head drop down and give it about one or two seconds. Even do a breath, breathe in, breathe out, so you really relax and you get a good stretch in this lower back area and slowly roll back into standing, okay? After, you know, I would say one or two weeks if you've been doing this program, you're still not seeing a change in your tolerance for walking, your comfort, you know, the frequency, duration, or intensity of your pain, then maybe this is not the right exercise. But remember, these exercises should never make you feel worse. A little soreness right afterwards, but never worse. If you really like this, please subscribe to our channel, turn on the notifications, hit our like, give a little thumbs up, um, and definitely place a comment if you have any questions. Have a great day. Start feeling better soon.